Hello and welcome to Simic Linings, where silver meets gold and bronze makes our minds wonder. I'm Wheeler, and joining me to talk about all the wonderful Simic uncommons of the world is, as always, my co-host, Adam Savadan. Wheeler, mm-hmm. I have a bone to pick with you. Okay. Null Tread Gargantuan was awful. Oh, real bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you told me that card was going to kill Jace the Mind Sculptor. No, I just, I said I played it with Jace the Mind Sculptor. <laughs> Yeah, my bad. You know what? That's on me. Okay, I, I should hold some blame, but you also listen to me. And besides, quit moaning. We've got company over, Adam. We've got a guest. we got a guest on top of our deck. <laughs> Nultred Gargantuan <laughs> joke. And we're thrilled to have them to the show. He worked as game design, world building, and UX on Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, as well as senior UX designer for Tabletop Magic. And the man that puts me in second place as the gayest Kamigawa fan, please welcome Daniel Holt. Daniel, how are you doing? Hey, I'm good. Welcome to Simic Linings. I've been wanting to have you on the show forever. Oh my God, I love this show. It has been a hassle trying to finally get you in here. Mm -hmm. We tried to get you in here with original Kamigawa, but there were no Simic Uncommons at that time. No. Uh, But finally, glad to have you here talking about a, a phenomenal card, if I may say so myself. Yeah, uh, speaking of the card, uh, I know every week that I'm supposed to, I draw art for the card, and I haven't seen the card yet, but (laughs) I just think we should go right into Aesthetics with Adam, Okay, and I want to show you what I drew for this week. Oh, I can't wait to see this. A very muscular turtle with wings (laughs) beating the crap out of a vampire. (laughs) It's in color, too. (laughs) I didn't expect that. Okay, so... I was thinking Colossal Sky Turtle, right? Yep. And I was like, well, it has to be futuristic. So I said Ninja Turtle. Like, it's a ninja, right? So I made it like a really big Ninja Turtle. And it was like, well, it doesn't look futuristic enough. So I gave him some very cool sunglasses. There is no real reason why he's punching Dracula. But it was very easy to draw, and that's why I picked Dracula. I thought it's because it came out after Val. You know, you're getting rid of the old set in with the new. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, 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 that's it. Damn, yeah, yeah. That's exactly <laughs> how I saw it, Daniel. And uh, um, I, I am inclined to agree. This really speaks to Adam's feelings on Crimson <laughs> Vow. And we have the actual art for the card, Colossal Sky Turtle. Yeah. Uh, in front of us now. Oh, it's also in color. Oh, I was close. I would say I was close. Comparing the two, there are a lot of similarities. <laughs> yeah. There's a turtle. Yeah. Yeah, there's blue on the, <laughs> There's a lot of blue. Uh, there's some clouds. Yeah, there's yeah. some clouds. I was close. You left out the city of Odawara. True. Yes, I did. But that was artistic liberties must be taken, Daniel, okay? <laughs> For what it's worth, Adam has always said that he struggles with cityscapes, especially Odawara. Look, man, perspective is hard. <laughs> well, how about some in-game perspective that we have an expert for? Daniel, let's talk about this card in terms of the design considerations, uh, limited, commander. What was going through your head or the team's head when you were working on this card? So we wanted to bring back two mechanics with this card, channel and channel. (laughs) Channel never really connected with me on Kamigawa's first go about, but I loved channel as a kid. So that, you know, really hooked me with this card. You know, I didn't even realize that it was an enchantment creature. You know what this goes in? Grim Guardian. This, of course, will receive a high Grim Guardian grade. GGG. Um, (laughs) Four out of five Grim Guardians. Speaking of GG, this card has two green pips, but only one blue. Do you expect that to be a bit of an issue for people looking to splash this in a blue deck? Or how do you think this is going to fare as far as limited goes? This card has three costs on it, and you're complaining about one of them. Yeah. Just do the other two. That's an excellent point, Daniel. Um, I was not complaining, though. Um, I will be complaining <laughs> when my opponent has this out on the field against me because it's just massive. Yes. Like, it's it's a big thing on the board, but it's also just kind of intimidating. Like, it's the kind of card that you will moan and groan when it hits the table or even if your opponent just again channels it or channels it (laughs) like it's so big especially just comparing it to other cards one might call it colossal even Mm -hmm. that's a great descriptor for the card what are our thoughts on maybe drafting two of these and just (laughs) cycling them with each other i mean yeah i got a round timer i could waste (laughs) 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 yeah i got some board states i want to drag out (laughs) (laughs) 
Is this your favorite card with channel on it twice? Yes. <laughs> I, for one, am a big fan of kind of removing hex proof, not entirely, but, you know, from uncommons like this and replacing it with ward. I think it's a pretty elegant way of not having too many feel bads of having your giant turtle mm-hmm. killed immediately. But speaking of Ward 2, Daniel, what are your two favorite wards from Tokyo? Shibuya and Shinjuku. Oh, didn't pick Tashima, man. <sighs> Daniel. Okay. What do you- uh, a bit of a curveball answer, but also, you know what? That's on me for asking something you've probably been asked a million times. Let's get back to the card at hand. When you have this card in your hand, <laughs> what are you most excited to channel it for? Oh, I, I just want to get stuff back from my graveyard. That's the best thing in all of magic. And Daniel? I want to bounce the things out and play as it works out well. <laughs> no, wait. You're not supposed to make cards with counterplay on them? Oh, wait till you hear about the other channel card in the set. Oh, I'm going to have to award the point to Daniel for this one. <laughs> Then that brings us to one of our final segments on the show, Wheeler's World Building, where we focus on the lore and the world building of the setting and where this card fits into it. Uh, Daniel, I can't help but notice that Colossal Sky Turtle is a 6-5, which means that this card trades with Okagachi in combat. What does that mean? Uh, No comment on that. Okay, uh, follow-up question. Similarly, trades with Kokusho. How does that make you feel? I love when Kokusho goes to the graveyard. I get five life from each opponent. They all lose five life. Makes me feel a little degenerate. but Unfortunately, you know, I like we well. are out of time. We're going to need to put a cap on this episode. <laughs> Thanks so much, Daniel, for being a great guest. But before we go, can I get your final thoughts on Colossal Sky Turtle and what your personal home phone number is? All righty. Well, uh, we should probably move on to the next week's guest because we've got a big one, Wheeler. That's right, Adam. Joining us for our anniversary episode, we've got some comfort food planned. Simic Linings veteran Brian David Marshall will be discussing the streets of New Capenna and why we didn't dig deep enough into Al Capone's vault. Um, I have more notes. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. Bye now. Bye, everybody.